Talking about ten minutes in the world A daily dose of God's word As we rightly divide Ten minutes in the world To prepare you for the judgment seat of Christ Ten minutes in the world To get your full reward properly At a wide way Ten minutes in the world Hi, welcome to 10 Minutes in the Word with Brother Ron Knight. I am Brother Ron Knight of Northern California Grace Fellowship near Sacramento, California. The goal of this short study is to give you a small dose of God's Word with us each week to get you prepared for the judgment seat of Christ so that you may get your full reward. So let's begin. Today's study is in the book of Romans. The Epistle of Paul to the Romans. Romans chapter 2, verse 24. For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you, as it is written. For circumcision verily profiteth, if thou keep the law. But if thou be a breaker of the law, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. Therefore, if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law, shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision? And shall not the uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it fulfill the law, judge thee, who by the letter and circumcision does transgress the law. For he is not a Jew which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit, and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. My friend, we saw last time that as the Apostle Paul condemned the, the heathen in Romans chapter 1, he begins to turn his eyes on the people of God in time past and will one day be again in the future, uh, the Jewish people, the nation of Israel. And as the Apostle, uh, the same way he indicted and he, he um, condemned the heathen, the Gentiles, he turns his eye or the eye, uh, uh, the eye of God towards the people of Israel of his day. And the people of Israel neglected what God desired for them to receive and believe. And that was his son, their Messiah, the Lord Jesus. But not only that, they truly did not keep God's law. We saw that they were hypocrites. And my friend, that is what religion does. It makes hypocrites out of men. In verse 24, he says, For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you, as it is written. My friend, as the nation of Israel, who, was, who were created by God to be his people in the earth, as they were out amongst the Gentiles, yea, even those who were in the nation of Israel, because they did not keep God's law with their, with their hearts, they had God's name blasphemed amongst the heathen, amongst the Gentiles. They brought shame and reproach to the name of Almighty God. And because of that, in verse 25, Paul goes on to say, for circumcision, and in circumcision, it's that ordinance of cutting off of the, the foreskin of the flesh as part of the covenant that God made with, with the people of Israel way back in Genesis chapter 17 before they were a people. He gave it to their father Abraham and, and, and through Abraham to his son Isaac and, and through Isaac to his son Jacob. And, and, and Jacob became Israel and the 12 tribes and, and all the men of Israel, all the, 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 the males in Israel, Israel were part of that circumcision covenant. But that covenant wasn't just a physical thing. Uh, we learn as we go through the scriptures that that circumcision of the foreskin of their flesh was to be a type and shadow of them circumcising their hearts, um, they, their, their hearts and ears, as Stephen says, you uncircumcised in hearts and in your ears. Uh, through Moses, way back in the law, he says, circumcise therefore your hearts. You were supposed to cut off the flesh 
of your heart, your spirit. They were to have soft hearts and soft ears to hear the word of God. So in verse 25, Paul says, For circumcision verily profit, profiteth, verily profiteth. It truly is a profit to the Jew. He says in verse 25, If thou keep the law, as he reasons with the, the religious Jew of his day, he says, if you keep the law, but if thou be a breaker of the law, and what we know that secretly and even outwardly, they were breakers of the law, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. There would be no profit uh, by doing the same things that the Gentile heathen do. That's how God would see each individual lawbreaker amongst the, the Jews. In Romans chapter 2, verse 26, he says, Therefore, if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law, now the uncircumcision would be those heathen Gentiles who weren't part of that circumcision covenant that God gave to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the nation of Israel. But what if they kept the righteousness of the law? Verse, th verse 26, Therefore, if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law, shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision wouldn't God look at those Gentiles who although they weren't part of that circumcision covenant given to Abraham Isaac and Jacob that if they were to perform uh, uh, righteousness wouldn't he count shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision and the answer was yes verse 27 and shall not uncircumcision which is by nature Speaking of the, the, the condition that the Gentiles were born in, if it fulfill the law, judge thee, who by the letter and circumcision does transgress the law. How would that look that a Gentile would fulfill God's law and a Jew, a, a circumcised man, would not? Wouldn't that Gentile judge thee? Wouldn't he be a witness against thee? Well, sure. Because the one who should have kept God's law didn't. And the one who wasn't required to or wasn't looked to keep his law wasn't, wasn't given the command. He did what was right. And so Paul says in verse 28, For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. Neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. A true Jew wasn't simply some, someone who had physical circumcision just had the religious trappings being a Jew that was their religion being the uns the, 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 the the circumcised that was that was their, their 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 religion their calling he says for he is not a Jew and he's speaking of a, a true Jew which is one outwardly just having that physical circumcision in the flesh neither is that circumcision that physical circumcision which is outward in the flesh. And Paul ends the chapter in verse 29, but he is a Jew, which is one inwardly. God is truly looking for a circumcision, not just simply of their foreskin of their outward flesh, but he is looking for circumcised hearts and ears. Verse 29, but he is a Jew, which is one inwardly. And circumcision is that of, notice, the heart, where? In the spirit. This is a spiritual thing God is looking for. And not in the letter. Not just the letter of the law, that physical circumcision. And, and it boils down, who are you trying to please? He ends verse 29, whose praise is not of men, but of God. Were they trying to please men? Being, being uh, showing that outward sh fair show in the flesh. That's what most of them were doing. The Lord Jesus Christ doing his earthly ministry. He got on those men in Israel. He says, you guys aren't trying. Your heart is far from God. You guys make these long prayers and wear long robes and so forth to, to be to be seen of men. He told them to to do things only to be seen of God, to receive praise of God. In Romans chapter 3, verse 1, what advantage then hath the Jew? Paul, Paul is going to deal with another object, objection. If, if physical circumcision is really not that important, 
or it's not as it's not the most important thing it's the one in the heart well why did god give it well it was a symbol of cutting off of the flesh what what you can produce in your own strength and going to what god himself will do he says what advantage then half the jew or what profit is there of circumcision? There was a an advantage of being a Jew in that at that time. It will be after the dispensation of grace as well. Or what profit is there of circumcision? There was profit. There was a lot of blessing to being the seed of Abraham of that in that time. God was what number one. God was with you. In verse two of chapter three, much in every way, much every way, there was a blessing chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. My friend, of all the blessings that God gave Israel, the number one blessing was that they would be the vessels of God's word to the world. We'll speak more about that in our next session. Be sure to join us next week at this same time. You can also join us for our live studies in Carmichael, California, each Sunday at 11 a.m. We teach God's word verse by verse and have an open time of Q&A to answer all of your Bible questions. You can also write in your Bible questions at NorCalGrace at Yahoo.com. That's NorCalGrace at Yahoo.com. You can also watch our Sunday videos at YouTube by searching NorCalGrace. That's all one word. That's YouTube NorCalGrace. Lastly, our Apostle Paul says in Galatians 6 that if you're being taught the word, it is only right to give back to him that teaches. So please remember us in your prayers and monthly giving. Go to YouTube NorCal Grace, all one word, and click the About page to learn more. Well, that's all we have for today. Thanks for listening to 10 Minutes in the Word with Brother Ron Knight. Until next time, I am Brother Ron Knight saying, May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Did you know them one day? God gives you and me one thousand four hundred and forty minutes in a day to learn about our Savior and His grace and the revelation of the mystery and Paul's epistles keeping memory by spending just ten minutes in the Word. A daily dose of God's word as we rightly divide Ten minutes in the word To prepare you for the judgment seat of Christ Ten minutes in the word To get your full reward properly at a fine way Ten minutes in the word